distracting everyone. Hey I guess welcome to the food truck. My name is Ruka and today we have episode 9, I think, of Disco Elysium. So last time in Disco Elysium we went around town, tried to find as much information as we can to get Hardy to talk to us. I mean, our chances weren't very good. And so we talked to Joyce, tried to get some information there, talked to Evart, did some stuff for him. Um, not particularly fond of doing that route, but, you know, it's, uh, it's done now and hopefully we don't have to help him any more than that. But after some trials and tribulation, and a little bit of fumbling with uh, trying to assert our authority. We did get some information that the lady we are looking for was so close to us all along. Right in room 3. The disco lady from the beginning of the game. So today we're going to talk to her, find out what she has for us. And uh, I'll be as respectful as I can according to, to Titus Hardy. Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. I'm kind of nervous where this is going to go, to be honest. Alright, let's get to it then. Okay, second floor. Let's go. Oh, wait, wait, what's this? What's this? What's this? This feels right. You belong here. Yeah, after we find the mixtape. We don't have that, though. Okay, knock, knock. It's time. You better open up this the time. The door is closed. There's still a dent in the vinyl, where you punched it before. Run your finger across the dent. This little depression is all you could inflict on the door. It's pretty sturdy. You swallow, like you swallowed the last time. Whatever bitter emotion was swimming to the surface then, and now, subsides, submerges, sinks back into you. Knock, knock. White morning. It was morning all along. You should have seen it coming. It was right behind her eyes. What? Should I have learned the right morning? Who is it? Oh, now she answers. A woman's voice answers, muffled by the door. Tired. Controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. I'm drying my hair. Okay. You're not naked, are you? Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. I will. Let's see what we got here. Hotel bill calculations. Looks like she had an extended stay. After months? Yeah, she that is an extended stay. Pile dirty clothes. A woman's. Yeah, it's hers. What's this? Bathroom? You can see the yard below. The corpse is no longer there. From that angle. That angle is kind of low, you know? This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. It's been used quite a lot. Look at the medication. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves. Sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. Quite the collection in here. Anything of not? Search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol, histoperidol, something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Necra. It's a lot of drugs. I mean, the, para the paracetamol is just like, um, what do you call this, anti-inflammatory, but I'm not sure what the rest of this is. Necra. This is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Necra. Opioid antagonist. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. The lieutenant nods, then looks at the door. Uh, pill sheets. Among some foreign probably Messinian or Godvaldian. Marked red blister packs you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. Electrochemistry, is there something more interesting here? Chemical hangover. 
Uh, yeah, okay, fine. I believe I'm trusting you on this. Okay, go. A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it. In sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. What's exciting about this orange bottle? It's speed, man. Oh. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine and talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Lieutenant, I also see a brand called Preptide. Preptide, a euphemism for pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy. Take it in secret. Told Kim about it, sweaty hands. Uh, nah. We're not taking it. We gotta keep him clean. There's no reason to take it. Okay, well, the door I should probably close, right? Can we close? There we go. No evidence, and <laughs> Kim is stuck in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, well. Wow, she gets a two-story suite? The bed has been hastily made. Anything here? This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Run your finger across the surface of the glass. Smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. This window was recently replaced. I wouldn't have thought of that. Looks like it, yes. Okay. Uh, that's the stairs. What's this? <laughs> Smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astra menthol. Like earlier. Look, a handful of dried white wildflowers. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. Uh, let's see. Let's grab it. You catch Woo! a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand. Just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Still got it. Still got it. What's over here? The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Uh, where does this lead to? I don't know. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. Do you think it's important? Probably not, but... I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and cantilevers. Tap your f tap the roof with your foot. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. Push. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy, too. Very sturdy. Yeah, we're not gonna try to too bust it down. Yet. Yet. Cold coffee and an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. Is the hedgehog blue? Okay, well, let's talk to the girl. Welcome to the roof. Class A, Miss Orange Disco Dancer. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. i never seen a cleaning lady myself, otherwise my room would have been cleaned. Nice view you got here. Is there a cleaning lady? I think I need one. Proceed politely. 
No time for pleasantries. We have a, we have questions for you. <laughs> nice view you got here. It's much nicer now. Her eyes wandered north towards the yard. Where the dead body used to hang. Clearly visible from the roof. But no longer. Why do you get a two-floor suite? Holy crap. Thank you for that, officers. Truly. You mentioned a cleaning lady. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. Eh, yeah, it has. Disco Infernum. Hell. You know not which you speak. There are vo uh, <laughs> vortices? There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell. To another place. A third place. Much different from our world. No, I just trashed the place. Uh... There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell. To another place. A third place. Much different from our world. A third place? Interesting. That's probably why the cleaning lady quit. Oh, is that what happened? I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Prison 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Prison 41. Do you have, do you have my badge? Have I ever. This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have seen in my life. And I have seen a few. Oh yeah. Life gets hard, but we go on. She declares. The chorus of the 35 single, megaphone in the entire human race, instills you with the fuck it all <laughs> swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. It's gotten pretty hard in the meantime, but go on. How long do you think until the hard wears, it, wears us down? Things are only getting easier for me. I'm a policeman. Do 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 do. I'm an imitated siren. We ain't seen nothing yet. There's a karaoke stage downstairs. Ooh, there's a karaoke stage downstairs. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wow. She shakes her head in silent disbelief, breathing in the coffee smell. Johnny Law is about to tear it up. Sad style. Actually, Johnny Law isn't going to tear it up. That would be unprofessional. Ah. Uh, Sad style. <laughs> I assure you, he's not about to tear it up in any style. In fact, we'll show him. You tear <laughs> it up all the styles. If I can find a tape. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Huh. I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. What could she be thinking of? It's hard to say. Her shoulders are relaxed, her eyes on the cigarette. What is your name, miss, for the record? Clausier Amondu. Where are you from? Vredefort, Republic of Oranje. She's answering everything quite nicely. Where is Oranje? A bad memory, officer. A bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. Parks, glass, duraluminium. Fredefort is a conference city. It's always autumn there. And night? At least it was for me. She squints her eyes as if to see them in the distance. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you're no longer there. How old are you? I'm 28. What do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. What's that? Oranis Lit. Okay, Oranis Lit. Oranis Literature. It's what I studied at the university. She raises both eyebrows. What is Orny's literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Orny's. All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. Sounds like Russian. Orny's lit, what do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money then? Money is very important. Show her some money. How do you make money? Cool. Cool. I've made more money by just being than I have with Rani's lit. Being what? Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Rani at 37. Ooh, 37, but you don't look that old. Wait. 51. 14. 14? Miss Rani. Now there is something you should linger on. Um, wouldn't it be um inappropriate to linger. What is Miss Oriani 37? I, I do not understand. It's a beauty pageant. 
held in the year of our century 37 in Aranye. She was 14 at the time. Okay, thank you for doing the math for me. Just need to make sure. Uh, you were 14? Indeed. Her voice is indifferent to the number. Cool. I disapprove of this custom. I don't think I've ever been 14. Yeah, cool. Full disclosure, I was Miss T. Noranye 37. The pageant was discontinued recently. Super cool. She raises her coffee cup as though making a toast. Another innocent tradition bulldozed by the march of ethical progress. Could we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why? Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. What is it doing there? Thank you for your candor. Why? Yeah, thank you for your candor. You are very frank with us. They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Really now? I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. How do I know you told us your real name? If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausier Mondu. It's a weird name. It could be a stage name, you never know. She seems to be telling the truth, sire. <sighs> okay then. Pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. Look, officers. I like this place. But I don't want to be stuck wandering the city like a ghost after being robbed of my travel documents. Okay, fair enough. I don't want to become an indentured servant in a brothel on Boogie Street. And I don't want my relatives to pay the ransom. There are plenty of other reasons for hiding your documents from the law. Uh, that's not why you hid it, though. It's also why I hid it. Why, yes. He's suddenly very attentive. I'm an unpopular girl. There are people back home who don't like me. If they show up, I'm in a hurry. She takes a drag. The kind of hurry where you can't afford to not find your documents. But don't worry. This has nothing to do with your investigation. Okay. What kind of people are these, the ones that you don't like? I would love to change the subject. It's not important. Unless I'm some kind of suspect. No, we just come to talk. Phew. Okay, then. Okie dokie. She pours herself more coffee. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. I want to go back to the passport thing. I'm afraid you... Why is that? Because it's... Thank you for your... I say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. What kind of people are these, the ones they don't like? You? I would love to change the you... subject. Okay. It's not important. Unless I'm some kind of suspect. You might be. You might be. No, I'm not. She waves you off. My colleague has an exploratory sense of humor. Don't hold it against him. Okay, then. I guess that's it for that line of thought. Okie dokie. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Thank you. That's it for the record. The record? So official. Nice room you've got here. Yeah, it's two floors. Freaking A. Yeah. It's pretty deluxe. What are you doing here in the whirling in rags? Well, it's the only place you can stay. Uh... I'm wintering. Wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the Whirling? Here in Martinez? Or here in Ravishol? Uh, in Martinez. I heard this is where the washed up disco has bins go. You came to the right place. You're too young to call yourself a washed up disco has been. No, this is Sassy Town. It's where the future of dance lies. Understood. You're too young to call yourself a disco has been. I'm really not. I mean, 28 is pretty young, not gonna lie. Uh, we're not gonna talk about the drugs. Where's the door lead to? Point to the door. I have no idea, officer. That window is new. It is. She moves slightly to your left to check her reflection in it. The lieutenant makes a note in his notebook. Yeah, quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Thank you. 
I've put a lot of time and effort into it. She says without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Rivershon, but you should still reprimand her. Narcomania is nothing to be proud of, miss. Uh, it, was, it was quite impressive. How did your master hoard? Eh, not really interested in either of those questionings. Uh, no further questions. I always heard you RCM guys were cool. You are. She gestures towards you with her cigarette. I don't know where her mind space is right now, but I'm very grateful that she's answering us straight. Okay. Watching herself reflected in the bedroom window, tall and sparkling and draped in smoke. I need to talk to you about your room again. Why? Well, let's just keep going. They tell us you were raped. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? Actually, it's already the afternoon. Is it? Yeah, it's uh, 6.20 apparently. Squinting, she takes a look around. The spring sun is high in the sky. People pass below. It is afternoon. Time flies, man. So were you. Yeah... I'm gonna go with not raped. I don't want to say that shit about him. Okay. So it wasn't you. But they're protecting you. Why is that? She draws out the word. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapable. I don't know. People will do anything to anyone. But if you're saying you're not the... If, they, if you're saying you're not raped... I mean, I knew it was a concocted story because there's something wrong here. Boy, they. She means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Okay. So, I mean, I, ha I had a guess that that wasn't really true. That's the common rumor right now. But if you're saying it's not true, what exactly happened? I just asked you to spice things up for us. Are you sure you weren't raped? What did happen between you and the victim? What can you tell me about him? Name, age, eyes. Why did they? What did they hang him for if not rape? Why was there a bullet in his head? How do you know the Hardy Boys? Uh, Titus asked you to spice things up for us? Pretty much. Makes sense. She cradles her coffee cup in both hands. Warming them. Okay, well, I'm not going to ask, are you sure you weren't raped? Because we, it's pretty straightforward. What did happen between you and the victim? We partied. Partied? Where have that heard that before? You mean like a birthday party? <laughs> what kind of party? Point to your bloated face. The kind I do? I don't get it. What do you mean partied? Uh, super partied, suspect partied with victim. Write that down, Kim. Uh... It probably is writing it down. Uh, where have I heard that before? A lot of partying going on. Yeah, I know. The same kind I did, probably. From Titus. About her and Titus's relationship. That's where you heard it. Uh, like the kind I do? With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. Oh, wow. That And I got wasted off of that. <laughs> now I feel like a noob. No one party parties harder than me. Harder than this? Keep pointing to your face. I didn't know it was physically possible. Neither did I. Oh, it is. You're still alive. But so are you and they. What did you do when you parted? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. She takes a sip of her coffee. What else? Stimulants. Mm. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. 
We also had sex. I figured as much. He wasn't gonna say it, but I figured as much. So were you lover? Uh, were you, so were you lovers? Were feelings involved? Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet and calm. Downstairs, at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. She taps on the roof with her 10 centimeter heel. Oh, wait, okay. This is not Hardy. This She's talking about the guy who was hanged. Gotcha. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. It must have been hard for you seeing him there. Oh, yes. I've had a great view. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. So why did they hang him? Who else shot him then? A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. Wait, so if you didn't do it, who did it? He takes a small step closer. And why would you hang the body if you guys didn't do it to cover up? You called us, the RCM. Yes. You're the one who called us. Jackpot. The call. Reporting the hanging. That was you. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. That's true. Okay. Reporting crimes is confidential in Revachol, miss. Before we go on, if it's snitching, then why do it? The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it how? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. Wow. So that's why the phone is out of order. She tampered with the whirling landline. So it wasn't stolen copper wires. You just cut it. Well, that would be the easiest way to do it, actually. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Well, I'm glad you're telling us. You're quite cooperative. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest with that. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. As do I, as do I. Still, that's pretty clever tampering. Simple and clever. Crossing the lines like that. Seems like you had some idea. That was nifty. Thanks. She manages to smile. She looks a bit like a little girl who's just been complimented on her bike repair skills. I like this girl. I mean, I knew I liked her from the beginning, but... I just like it when co people cooperate with the investigation, you know? A little cooperation is nice. And it's good to find someone who's willing, willing to tell us everything. Or at least almost everything. Pretty much everything. Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the Union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. That's true. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. Uh, what can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Okay. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know. Hair? Another puff. More nervous. Okay. You are emotionally unstable, I get it. We'll we'll continue another time. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. What did they hang him for, if not rape? I'm assuming someone shot him and they had to hide the reason? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. Yeah, yeah. And his role in the strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. Okay, good Good to know you know that much. Good to know you know that much. And they lynched him for it? She nods. Why was there a bullet in his head? Bullet? They shot him too? 
someone sh someone shot him. But the guys downstairs uh, only mentioned the hanging. If it wasn't them and it wasn't you, who shot him? There's a silence. Her brows meet in the middle from a pained frown. I'm not picking up on any theater craft here, sir. The pause is sincere. Yeah, I picked up on that too. They stripped his clothes and they shot him? You mean after they hanged him? I'm confused, sorry. I'm confused too, what do you know? So am I. Were you aware that he had also been shot, miss? Things are starting to go a little over my head here. I thought he was hanged. I was not present when they did it. I don't know what happened. I just know what they told me. And Sylvie, the bartender. This is beginning to get confusing for you too. And we don't like that. Where was she last Sunday night? Where were you when this happened? Cowering. I was cowering downstairs with Sylvie. Why were you cowering? How do you know? How do the Hardy boys know you? They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. Yeah, we met with them. Uh, she looks at the floor. It's tarred. How did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. Okay, you don't like them as much. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. You know, a thought ran through my head um, where I'm thinking, is it possible that the, that the Hardy Boys raped her also? But I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sensing that. I could be wrong, but I'm not sensing that. But she seems to be in a better relationship with the person who was hanged rather than the Hardy Boys, so what's going on here? Thank you for telling us all this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. Uh, the lieutenant looks at you. I had something else before we go. A little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. Let's see. Let's talk more about the so-called assault. What is this wildflower? Show her the flower. Let's let's go with that first. She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? Why was it there? Sudden change of topic. Why was it there? Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? Possibly. Okay, uh, let's talk more about the so-called assault. Not my favorite topic, but okay. Okay, nothing here. How about we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? I'm confused about the bullet. Let's try that really quick. She looks back. Didn't think so. Time moves slowly. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We will protect you from her beauty. We will <laughs> consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. We will see through deceits. You are shielded. You are wise. Ah, the voices in my head. They're really... The only ones keeping me on track, but at the same time, trying to deceive me. You are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that line her limbs, just below the silver jumpsuit. What is happening? Nothing. Just time passing. Don't worry. Anything out of the ordinary and you would be notified. 
Why are you guys being so chatty right now? You don't usually all do this at, all at once. Air moves in your windpipe. Your heart beats. You're a detective. Get back to detecting. Am I being beguiled? She presses her elbows against her waist and slowly turns her head. Her hair brushes her shoulders, making a small hissing sound, almost imperceptible. Avert your eyes. The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds. Okay, well... Why not? I'll be here until 11 p.m. Drinking coffee, most likely. That's a long time to be drinking coffee. I gotta be able to sleep. Among other things. Hold on, Kim. Let me just check what I have really quick. I'm kind of confused. Oh yeah, my dress shirt. Why? Why is? Why is that uh, triggering? As well as the gloves. Uh, Maybell. The wildflower you caught. One of the bouquet of uh, muguets that you found on the whirling roof. It's shedding its petals quickly in your pocket. Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. They're white, a bell-shaped crown. What is this, Kim? This is the Insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the Revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. The lieutenant corrects his glasses. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? How does this flower blossom early in spring? Yes, but not this early. Not to my knowledge. It looks dried. Preserved. Is it a coincidence of being on the roof? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll see. He makes a little note on his notebook. Very well. Put the flower back. The petals feel dry and fragile in your head. Wait, wait, water wait. flows under the channel bridge. Dark water. You rub your sides for warmth, but there is none. Blow your fingers. Inland, above the Martinez distributary, the channel that brought wastewater from the silk mills of Jamro, and then dead bodies during the war. The wrinkled fingers of an old man crush flower petals, then sprinkle them in the stream like white salt. Wait, wait. Which side? Which side? Six crumbling petals. As I say, this flower. The revolutionaries, so the commoners and the anarchists. White's their color. But the custom started in the suzerain's army, so it held meaning for the kingsmen too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Okay, I was thinking like what side of the body? That wasn't what, that's not what I was uh, thinking of. Okay. The petals feel dry. Water flows under the channel bridge. Stand still. Dark water. The feeling recedes. Okay. Nothing important there. Uh, spoke to Klaus. Klaus, eh? Confront the Hardy Boys. We gotta talk to Kim first, though, before we do that. Let's talk to Kim. Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called Hardy Boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. Yeah, it did. His voice is lowered. So, you think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. <laughs> Saying in a hushed voice, why did she tell us all that? What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. She seems... Candid. Something is off here. She does seem candid. You think so? Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. That's true. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good, that's good information. Well, at the very least, we can probably tell that she did have uh, good relations with the, the one that was hanged as well as, you know, the reason for what happened. 
definitely doesn't do the hardy, hardy boys any good. Uh, let me close the door. Can I close the door? There we go. Down we go. All right, hardy boys, you got a lot of explaining to do. I might have to call Sylvie too. It's you again. What is it? Yeah, you got a lot of explaining to do. Uh. Class A says she wasn't raped. What do you have to say about that? Fuck! I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. Wow! Admitted right there, the big man's eyes and veins bulge. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. She steps in forcefully. I'm sorry, but the uh, circumstantial evidence over here says otherwise. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. He turns back to you. She's just in denial, <laughs> asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Crazy? What are you talking about? She was very lucid. I did think that, yes, that she was a little crazy. Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. I didn't push her. Everything I... Everything came out pretty easily. No pushing involved. He says through clenched teeth. His hands become fists. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking. Something in breaks in him. He takes he takes a step closer. Hit you, duck. Duck. Titus Hardy. Her voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Everard personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper, we know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. The tattooed man snaps his fingers to get your attention. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? He turns to Titus, who's still breathing heavily. Here, jerkwad, listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me this soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play, this <laughs> tape. Their story is in tatters, a mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. <laughs> the fuck are you a cop for, then? His eye twitches. Big T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. I'll get back to you on the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments to Titus Hardy. He pushes the little tape towards you with a giant hand. Take the tape. Fine, I'll listen to it. Excuse me? What the fuck was that? Sorry, I misspoke. I'll take the tape. I can finish this without listening to the tape. Sorry, I misspoke. I'll take the tape. Good. Glad to hear that. You can keep it, too. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. He says, adjusting his belt buckle. Okay. Welp. Now we gotta go to the, um... What do you call this? The... The pawn shop, because there is something that plays a tape there. 
Magnetic tape, acquired from Titus Hardy, supposedly holds, holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a decryption station. Station. Not a good uh, omen. You stare at the great door gunner Megamix. If only you had a boombox, you would be able to play Titus's tape. I know where to get one. Let's see. I know where to get one. Let me just... I, I don't think I can play in my room. I want to try that first before I try to buy anything. I mean, the one at the... The one at the um, the pawn shop costs 12 real. Oh, it looks like this is spinning, so it might be working. Let me close the door. We don't want anyone to hear this. Okay, let's try it now. The compact tape player is still and silent. Seems it has completely broken down now. Crap. The machine was made in Rivershaw by a company called Le Mercier. Their logo depicts the triple tower Delta Skyline. It was supposedly built to last. Until I broke it. There's no fixing this one. This would have been very helpful with the Mega Mix. But it isn't anymore. Yeah, any ideas? My kinema only comes with radio. Let's try to find a new tape player. Perhaps we should talk to Roy at the pawn shop. He has stuff. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Alright, we can leave my door open. There's nothing valuable there. Ah, okay then. Oh, it looks like the night crowd is here. Good to know. Got a little rainbow going on. Okay, Roy! Roy! It only costs 12, right? You didn't jack up the price on me, right? What's this? Scribble between the th uh, the thighs of a page three girl. Something disco? I can't read that. The Gorinch disco? Okay, the guy's not over there. Okay, Roy, I got something for you. Or at least, maybe you got something for me. Hey, Roy. Hello again. How can I help you? Roy's prices are strange. Uh, this thing. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. Can I just play a tape on one of the boomboxes really quick? Sorry, man. I can't be giving out freebies. Never have, won't now. Uh, can I get a discount on this boombox? A police discount? A discount? I do have to keep the lights on, man. It's 12 real. Ah, uh, it was worth a shot. Remember, he doesn't like music. He likes sounds. The door gun a mega mix is his type of tape. Certainly, he'd give you a discount if he knew you'd play something so experimental. Fair enough, businessman. Twelve it is. How does ten real sound? Uh, let's make it eight. I'm not just doing any police work. I've got the door gunner mega mix here on error defining work. Let's do four real. Four real is offensively <laughs> low, but just this once, for the music concrete cop. Offensively low for a whole boombox. I do agree. Uh, thanks for the discount, man. Here's the money for the boombox. Tape player Harmon Wowshi02, equipped to play tapes. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. Nice! Tools. I got a tape player now. Oh my gosh! It's... <laughs> That's it. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. We're actually holding it like a boombox. You know what we need? You know what we need with this? Boombox. A little bit of something something. Um, glasses. 
I, I think we can keep the bell button pants. I don't know about the jacket. Awesome! Maybe change the shirt though, it looks kind of tacky. There we go! Fancy sh fancy shirt. Like a proper cop. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's... Uh, authority minus one, minus two cyber fair. we're not gonna need that here. Alright, we're gonna play your stuff here, so you can see it in action. The portal reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. Play the tape. You push, come on set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishar. <laughs> this is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. A man's voice says, another loud screech, some kind of machinery. The harbor. That's the son of a Gvalson crane. The lieutenant takes out his notebook. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. More static. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. This part is unintelligible. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco con on the counter. You know, the dance a whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your portal reel. The tape stops spinning. When was that the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. Agreed. He also sounded inebriated. But he did say he was going to do it. You can't edit words into someone's mouth. I think he sounded alright, just letting out some steam. Ah. Uh, did say he was gonna do it. Can't edit words into someone's mouth. He was also inebriated. Still. You're familiar with this look now. It's this look of suspicion. It seemed authentic Let's see. enough. Indeed, but. The lieutenant looks at the tape. You are familiar with this look now. Look of suspicion. Uh, it seemed authentic enough. Probably mm. recorded off the sh Still. Who says Cordy? Cordy could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. The third one must be relaying the signal. What's Chohoi? A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. A symbol of soldier of the apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, then what now? I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. Agreed. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. <laughs> well, I'm confused. Let me see. Minus one authority. We don't want that on us. Minus two savoir faire. What is reducing my savoir faire? The pants are. I can't change my pants out. I wish I can change my shoes out. They're horrendous. <laughs> anyway. One minus one morale. Uh, we can we can remove that. Physique. Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the Magic happens. Look at the bottle. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous. 
Better pop it open before they change their minds. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. No, no, I'm not gonna do that. Fine, we're not worried. You'll crawl back to this bottle soon enough. We'll give you another chance. Booze always gives you another chance. You've passed up your chance to start drinking alcohol for now. <laughs> but don't worry. The option to start drinking becomes available again in two hours. Wow, even, even the tutorial agents are encouraging me to drink. Yeah, I'm trying to keep him clean. I'm trying to keep him clean. All right, let's go ahead and get to Classe up on the roof. Let's go. Oh yeah, I probably should, <laughs> should probably take this off, but I didn't realize there was music playing on this. Distracting everyone. <laughs> Distracting everyone. Alright, Glassy. Wait, what's this? She made around four months of payments for this room. Yeah, I wonder how much it cost. It's quite a bit of money. More money than I had, that's for sure. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Iris Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intentions to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. A smile flits across her face. Wow, she seems very threatening right now. What's this music? She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? <laughs> he, she arches her brow. Those are the exact words he used. Something to that effect. Yeah, something to that effect. The phrase was used. The lieutenant checks his notes and nods. Yeah, that was practically his pickup line. She picks up the cup. She picks the cup back up. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Okay, well, if she's okay with it, what is going on then? Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohoi style? Yeah, the word whore was used. Kohoi was mentioned. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little Kohoi. It wasn't his everything. Why does he say things like that? Machismo? Do you think he was trying to scare people? It could be machismo. But would you actually say, do... I don't... Uh, I, I guess you would. It's not my thing, so I, I wouldn't know. But I guess it is machismo. Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living. Until they just... Sort of turn into his, um... Uh... What's the word I'm looking for? She thinks. She's quite observant about the human character. Trained to observe, even. Did you learn this from studying Oranese Lit? Sounds uh, psychological. Coping mechanism? Catchphrase? Um, coping? Persona? Then tur turned it into his... Persona? 
Running joke. Running joke. I was going to say running joke. Mm. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. I mean, this girl seems like she's chill about the whole situation. It was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Orani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. Weren't you afraid of him? And you liked this kind of stuff? And you spent time with this person romantically? You weren't afraid of him? Afraid of what? That tape the Hardy Boys recorded? Your mother probably never told you this, but girls are evil. Uh, I've had experience with that, yes. Had I the physical robustness and social support, I'd be in Kohoi. I would be tearing it up Soldier of the Apocalypse style. She wouldn't. She doesn't have the full hoy in her. Oh, come on, Half-Light. Just give it to her. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. She thinks. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Now that you had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but... It was no use. Okay, that part checks out. Lelystad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. Then tears out a page and hands it to you. The young woman cranes her neck, <laughs> trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. Everything left to be clarified is in the column on the left. Hmm. Where is Lelystad, the place I mean? In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. Okay. The Lelystad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows silos and wheat so it's a very rural area okay that's that's okay you were almost right officer <clears throat> that means his race was occidental not mondial i looked at the form okay the lieutenant shakes his head just like you missed a shot in darts looks like class a uh you were both from oranje yes we were compatriots Chotomate. Okay, no, 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 she's, she's, not, she's not with the security detail, never mind. For some reason I thought it was, she was, I didn't think, I think it was. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of Oranian Rek, I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. Bad habits do bring to get people together. Sex. <laughs> Alcohol. Thank you, electrochemistry. No love for Mother Oranje. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. I no need to get political. The young woman is smiling, still, about their bad habits. How old was he, miss? He was 42. 42? Now we have an exact age. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. Well, we had, we said mid-40s. He had many scars that made him appear older. But no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, <laughs> officer. The lieutenant taps on his notebook once, as though assigning some kind of point. Points aren't good. <laughs> Have one, you old 
dog before we all die. I did not know this was a competition, Kim. Better not mention it. Better not mention it. The young woman looks at you, then the lieutenant, then you. His eye color. Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Wow. This is so poetic. This is so poetic. She stops her eyes half closed and continues. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. She takes a drag. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. She seemed to enjoy the word. Ah, oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. The lieutenant suddenly remembers. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. Wow, they were very close if she got this much information. Uh, he had a tattoo, what did it mean? Oh, that. She smiles. What did it represent, do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. I mean, I figure that much. For showing off to chicks, how so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this Oranese lit? Don't interrupt, conceptualization. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? <laughs> He points at the air with her sharp nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. And he says, That was too hardcore. <laughs> Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. She lowers her voice comically. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this. Oh, yeah. She nods. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? Hand her the photo. No, thank you. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She does not take it. She pours herself some more coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms. From a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, <laughs> so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Not a very fun story. Good story, thanks. Uh, not a very fun story. It is when you're high. Mm. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. A change of topic? She smiles faintly. Uh, could it be that love did him in? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? I'm kind of confused why we even asked that. What do I mean? I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? He raises an eyebrow. He told me love did him in. That's not funny, officer. I didn't... okay. Her voice is like a slash through the air. Her shoulders tense up. Okay, well, I'm sorry. That wasn't, um... That was my first offense against her. Something miraculous is coming. He told me. The lieutenant blinks, his expression 
does not change. All right, let's see where this is going. From way out in the northwest, he told me. So maybe he was wrong. Forget about it. From way out in the northwest. Cool. I think we've finished this line of questioning. Hand the lieutenant back his notes. All right. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his, in his notes and observes a young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. All right, I think that's all we got. Uh, yeah, that's all we got for now. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, and we guess about mid-40s. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Yeah, what about it? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. Mm. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Kim, how old do you think I am? Miss, how old do you think I am? I got this, I got this. My age, I think I'm... Kim, how, do, how old do you think I am? Huh? The lieutenant isn't quite sure he heard you. How old do I look? How old? Hmm. 58? <laughs> I don't think we're that old. Oh my god, that's really old. Really? Maybe you're wrong. You were wrong about my, the deceased, too. He was way younger. Oh my god, that's really old. Really? You asked. Maybe you're wrong. Ah, uh, you're probably right. That's not about what I look. Actually, you make that 54. Alcoholism has severely impacted your appearance. And I was wrong about the age of the deceased. Okay, we didn't bring it up. You brought it up. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. Bring it on. I am not afraid of the truth. I don't want to think about this anymore. Bring it on. To the laboratorium. Oh, it's a thought. Laboratorium, date of birth generator, temporary research bonus, none. Okay, so let's go ahead and open that up. I want to know. Internalized, date of birth. Uh, let's see, we still have white morning and whatever the heck this is. We're gonna... Um, we're, go we're going to think on these in our sleep. Now it's not a good time. Now it's not a good time. Okay. Well, that's some good information. I think it's time to talk to the Hardy Boys again. That's really all we can do. And as far as uh, thoughts so far, the Hardy Boys probably just wanted a reason to kill him. Because she doesn't seem too disturbed about it. Not at all. She really liked the guy. She really liked the guy. So, what do you have to say about that, Hardy Boys? What do you have to say? It's you again. What is it? I think you were in the wrong. I, so I talked to Classy about the tape. And? And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. I have no reason to doubt her. She seems very genuine compared to you guys who just want to kill people for some reason. He stares at his beer for two seconds intently, then turns to you. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Gold. It was locker room talk. It's not evidence. It was dark stuff, but it didn't prove anything, and it didn't change her mind. Yeah, it was bad. Honestly, I expected it to have more effect. She pretty much laughed it off, Titus. She laughed it off. She really did laugh it off. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine. People are supposed to be like that. He shakes his head in disbelief. It did not come as a surprise to her, and she definitely wasn't scared. Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. If anything, she seemed turned on by the whole door gunning thing. <laughs> 
Titus, she said she would like to be a little door gunner herself. She could. No, she didn't say that. Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. The lieutenant looks at you, then him. Funny. No good goddamn psycho whore. What's your problem then? I'm not I'm not even sure. I believe her. What's your story? You tell me. You've been very antagonistic. Maybe you wanted her for yourself. That's what I'm thinking. Ibis mumbles, his lips barely moving. Seems like they wanted to give Clasia a second chance to play along. She still didn't. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... He slams his giant fist on the doorframe. Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. Elizabeth, do you know the entire story? Because I don't think you're telling me anything. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? Titus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. Okay, good. I think you had a lie planned, but she didn't play along. Maybe she, is, she isn't who you thought she was. Maybe she's in denial, you know, like a little defense mechanism. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? Wrap this up. Eh, I think you had a live plan, but she didn't play along. I ask for your opinion. Not a bedtime story. Tell it to your grandma. Hey, that's offensive to your grandma. Uh, this tape was the last chance for her to do what was planned. This chance was the last chance for her to do what was planned. But she didn't. She knows she can't lie to us. Unlike you. Fantastic. So now... You remember how to do your job. I'm so sick of this piss. We should get something harder in here. Well, ask Gart about that. I wouldn't know anything. Despondently glances at his beer. Yeah, guys! We should get a party going tonight! And this guy just keeps on parroting. Why? Ah, right. You were the old leader. Uh... Maybe not, then. Okay. At least he still has some influence. He looks at the old man in the corner. Success. They admitted to unlawful collaboration to derail the investigation. Except the old man. He had nothing to do with it except observe. I think that's what he did anyway. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah. I know her. She's just a girl. In over her head. Wow, that's the softest he's ever been on me. He looks upstairs, distracted. You don't know, she's a model, she won a pageant. She's not some helpless girl, she handled the mercenary very well. Well enough. She's a hardcore party girl with a bigger death wish than mine. <laughs> she probably does. She probably is. Uh, I guess you do know her then. Uh, she's not some helpless girl, she handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes, we heard all about it, and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. Yeah, it still stands. She's not in denial. Be straight with me, Titus, what really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's still the thing with the gunshot. Explain that, please, explain that. He puts his giant face on his hands and sighs. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. They're defeated. They are defeated. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... He taps in his notebook. You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. He gets closer. Are we gonna get in the fight? Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! He throws his beer can down. Okay, well you lost. Now you're throwing a tantrum. Good job, little boy. This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. Exactly. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. 
On the floor, beer drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. You know, I thought you were gonna ask for something harder. Beer's not gonna do you under. You know, just just saying, just saying. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. Oh boy, guard, don't egg them on, please. But it's gonna be good, good for your business. 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Glenn livens up. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be. Ooh, convince Titus he is being manipulated. You know what? Rhetoric. Do I have anything for rhetoric? I don't think I have anything for rhetoric. What's my stats like? Ah, oh, jeez. Let's go it. Let's do it. Clasia is playing them like a fiddle. Tell them how bad they got played and they'll tell you the truth. There are many ways to go about it. All of them really good. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to figure this out myself, don't I? You guys are always telling me they're good and then they are it. <laughs> Those are the other guys. My shit is solid gold. You can trust me. Can I? All those ideas look really bad. I didn't even look at them yet. Uh, okay, but please, I can't afford to fail now that I've come so far. They, they look really bad. Oh, you don't like these arguments. <laughs> Let's see you come up with your own, then. Come on. Everyone's waiting. Where are they? Whatever. Just do the fiddle thing, sire. It'll be artistic. And if you've already done it, do it again. Oh, my gosh. Well... It seems very clear that I'm now talking to the voices in my head, and it's not going well. Okay, man. It's clear you're being played like a fiddle. Play an imaginary fiddle. That's gonna rile them up. I know what's going on here. I've been wrong, too. I got this fucking dark shadow of my heart. I'm gonna tell you a little story about Kim here. No, don't bring Kim into this. Kim, I'm gonna need your gun again. <laughs> no. Ah... Uh... I know what's going on here. I've been wrong too. I got this dark thing over my heart. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, it's either two or three. It's either two or three. Do I open up to this guy? No. No. Let's not show him any of our weakness. Let's go to number two. No, we fucking ain't, asshole. No one's fiddling anyone in here. Glenn jumps in, shouting. No, no, Glenn. I want to hear this. Who do you think is fucking fiddling me? Who do you think? Keep playing the imaginary fiddle, grin sagely. Tis pity she's a whore, wink. <laughs> uh... Perform a dramatic finale on the imaginary fiddle. The hunter becomes the hunter. What? That doesn't make sense. You promised there would be a good options. Where are they? <laughs> oh, you want more good options. Here we go. So good. I gotta navigate this myself. Come on. I'm in your sweet little plaything upstairs. More fiddling. Titus, pussy boy. Dramatic put the fiddle down. You and I both know where this is going. Who do you think? Lord, what is happening to me? Looks up. <laughs> Perform a dramatic finale. Uh, we're not doing that yet. Titus, pussy boy. You and I both know where this is going. Oh my gosh. I mean, you're a sweet little plaything upstairs. Let's try with number one. I hope this is good. I hope this works. <laughs> First, he tries to kill himself, and now this? What next? No, no. He's just playing his viola da gamba. Before becoming a detective, my partner was a violinist. Many of us were. No, no, Kim, no one's gonna believe you. He's working really, really hard to spin this. It's not easy. Time to move to more serious matters, like what really happened between you and the man you hanged. Fuck that! Kick his ass, boss! 
This is a fiddle free establishment. Hey, come on, I like that fiddle. You hear that? One more peep out of you, and you're on the curb, fiddle man. I do not understand. This fiddle play totally fell apart. The concept was solid, but the delivery tragically off. You sounded like a madman, not a cop. Hey, rhetoric. Come on. You didn't. You weren't helping, dude. Strange reaction to Bullet. Push Titus on the tape. Angus can't take the pressure. Warned about the tribunal. Discuss Eighth Hardy. Confronted about drug trade. Okay, I think I'm going to increase my. Do I have any equipment that, re that increases rhetoric? I, I highly doubt it. I, I kind of wish I could like change my equipment mid um, minus one rhetoric. Yeah, that's not going to help me. I wish I could change my equipment mid conversation, but I guess they don't let us do that. All right, one more to rhetoric. Despite it being pretty high, we need to get it even even higher. It's you again. What is it? Come on, let's try it. Round two. Or four. Possibly four. Go! I don't know what went wrong the last time. You have so many good ideas here. Make them all see their puppets on a string. I know what's going on here. I've been wrong too. What the hell are you talking about? I was awakened into this world. Something came with me. An ancient sadness. Titus man, I should have seen it coming. It was right behind your eyes. I was fucked by some chick. Fuck real bad. Oh boy, should I go with this route? I mean, we do know his story about his ex-wife. Kind of, sort of. Probably. Probably should go that way. Look around, cop. These men are dock workers. They don't want to hear about your psycho circus. Mm. I don't know, boss. I'm always up for another suicide attempt. No, that's not what this is about. Yeah, me too. I'm always up to see a cop cry. You won't hear it. That's enough for the circus now, officer. Let's do procedural questions. Or even, why not take a little breather? These working class oafs don't know how to talk about feelings. You shouldn't have opened up to them. Or anyone. I know, I know. I thought I was going to work but I don't know how else to do it except the the violin thing and that 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 didn't that didn't help one bit how was I supposed to handle that come on 58% that that helped me before it's you again what is it okay let's try again let's try again all right 72% if this fails I am um, I will rage quit, maybe. Convinced Thank Titus you. is being manipulated? Bad idea. Bringing her up will do no good. You should know by now. Titus will never falter. Yeah, I guess so. Now you're do you know, now you're now you're helping. Last time I I managed to we go through. This time you're helping. But you know someone who might. One of his boys will. That's it then. Case closed. Look around. We're going home, Kim. Eh, one of his boys will. Fat Angus, the powerful guy, Mr. All Muscle. The time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. That's it then. Case closed. Look around. We're going home, Kim. Huh? The lieutenant raises his eyebrows. He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... He takes out his notebook. Because some chick. Because you're a foreigner. Because... You work for the wrong people. Because they like killing. Because of some chick. Because you're a foreigner. They kill you because they don't like you. All because of some chick. 
All because of some chick. Bring that up one more time, and you won't get to write that report. I wince. It's involuntary. The man's fists under the table are bald. You can tell from his neck and shoulders. He means it. Try it. Yes, I understand, Alain. That's your name, right? Alain? You'll kill us. That's what they do in the Wild North. He scratches in his notebook. They just hang you, like in the Dark Ages. Make a display of your corpse. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They, they can't even remember. They just hang you, shoot you, light you up on fire. They don't care. They just hang you. They just shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. Mm, they d hang you like in the Dark Ages. Make a display of your corpse. I mean, we do know about the shooting. Should we go with the shooting? Let's go with the shooting. It wasn't that. It wasn't. We didn't shoot him. Oh, Angus. Tell me a little bit more about this, Angus. There's something weighing in your conscience. What is it? That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will <laughs> be next if you don't shut up. Theo, I respect you out of everyone else here, but we got a job to do. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. Firearm. A glass zero 08 Ooh. or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Turn to Angus, or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him for no reason? Turn to Theo. What happens if I keep talking? You're gonna kill me too? In this bar, for nothing. Look at Kim first. Let's look at Kim first. Mm. Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him for no reason. We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> Ooh, that's a confession if I ever heard one. Okay. So why did you... I don't understand why you're trying to cover it up then. If it wasn't you guys who did everything. I mean, your footprints were there. So what's going on? Tell me. Shut up, Angus. He was dead before you hanged him? Fatty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Okay. Why are you guys trying to hide this so badly? I want to know. The little guy hits Angus on the back of the head. A loud slap. Dennis, stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. All right, Titus. <sighs> The room falls quiet. So quiet you can hear Angus's wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. Angie? Oh, come on, even they're picking on you. I left <laughs> it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. He grabs his chest. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you, just give her up. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is all about her, huh? Lizzie snaps at him, and then turns to Titus. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. He turns to the fixer. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. She walks off without looking back. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. I'm sorry I made you fight. guys fight. Kim, we did it. The lieutenant gives a smile. Only you can see. Well, no, no point on apologizing to these guys. Let's go in for the kill. So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. So who killed the merc then? Any leads? Whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls plural? Plural? There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? 
Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Class J came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not in a fun way. Well, Titus, Hardy, you are being very cooperative right now. I guess you know when you're beat. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. That's, uh... That's, that's pretty straightforward, okay. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> God darn it, Shanky. If I didn't hate you, I would say good job. Good job anyway. You don't get to talk yet, Shanky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. He turns back to you. What happened to him? What happened, what happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That fucking... Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He scratches his chin. He means they'd been fucking? I mean, probably. Tibbs patched the window. And the corpse. We hanged. Okay. Uh, that explains the, the new window. Who is Tibbs? The 8th Hardy? Nah. He's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Okay. If Classy didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. She told me some people were after her, from Aranye. Uh, she wouldn't say more. Didn't notice anything, what kind of shit are we talking about? Mm. She told me some people were after her, I think she kind of mentioned that. Yeah, she wouldn't. She's fucked if she shows up on police radar. These people, who are they? They're powerful, connected to the moral intern. Ooh. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. I see. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, but you do you. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside. Behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hmm. Hers, you mean? I mean the people after Klausia. Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. Possibly. And I don't know, but thank you for the cooperation so far. I like that. Been thinking the same thing myself. The young guy nods. I don't think you thought anything. Just saying. And you had your ideas about his past, too. My dude. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns. Training. Years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Cronell. Huh. <sighs> Let's think about this. If it was um, from Cranell and they use it as an excuse to, I don't know, use a tribunal to kill everyone else in uh, Martinez? Oh. Possibly. I mean, I can see that happening. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. And you haven't because the bridge is out, is that right? These theories, not bad. Don't buy either one, but still. This guy's not as dumb as he looks. He really played the tough guy, that's for sure. Uh, whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Okay. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Earlier you said the girls asked for your help. Was this the other girl? That's right. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. Ah, oh, okay. So Cla Classe was, um... I wonder if she's involved with the drug, drug trade, too. I wonder if she's involved with the drug trade, too. 
It's her, isn't it? The drug trafficker. The eighth missing Hardy. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. The big guy steps toward you. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy boys. You don't know her, anyway. Well, Tommy told me a little bit. You know I'm okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. Understood. Can you tell me anything about her name, current location? You're going to stonewall me if I ask more about her, huh? Uh, can you tell me anything about her? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. Hmm. Okay. Let's try to see if we can probe. In a manner of... Remember the two girls? That's right. Fella, that woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her, anyway. You know it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. We're Hardy Boys. And that's it. Okay. You're gonna stonewall me if I ask more about her, aren't you? Glad you understand that. Okay. Oh, sorry I made you guys fight. No, no apologies needed. Let's go. Thank you, Titus. I'll go talk to her one last time. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. He grabs his beer and swirls it in his hand, then thinks of something. She, Klausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... But you would still prefer if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket. He turns to leave. Well... That's a uh, very informative, Titus. We could have saved a lot of trouble if you just cooperated sooner. I still don't understand why you had to hide everything. I probably should pay for tonight. Let's go. Can I help you? I bought my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Yeah, 20 real for tonight. For real. <laughs> Good. You got the room for the night, but remember... You'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. How could anyone forget, asshole? Yeah, let's just leave it alone, Half-Life. I know, it's a business. And now we gotta make up um, about 9 real. Let's say 9.5 real for uh, tomorrow. Good thing I got a little bit out of... Um, Our thieving lorry man. Corruption, possibly. But you know what? It's all good here. We need the money for the room. <laughs> we need the money for the room since we don't have a free space. Free place to stay. Not yet anyway. Okay, you got some explaining to do, girl. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate, to being here with you and what's to come. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. That's the only reason why we come back up here. I guess you knew that. She puts her coffee mug on the table. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. You don't look surprised. You were expecting this. You sent us on a runaround. You lied to us, miss. Chill, I'm the cool cop, remember? Uh, you don't look surprised. You were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. She winces. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. She looks at her feet. That's not good enough reason. 
Cool, I'm satisfied with this explanation. No, you're not. That's not good enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. She reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glance it over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon, wine dark in the evening light. What lies beyond it? The pearl, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Aranye, the old, old world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the Moor Lintern? What's the RCM's involvement with the Moor Lintern got to do with this? RCM isn't the lapdog of the Moor Lintern, you don't have to worry about. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the Moor Lintern? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She nods. Is this part of why Oranye is a bad memory for you? Has this got something to do with you being Miss Oranye 37? No, it doesn't. What's going on? What did you do? Is this part of the reason why Oranye is a bad memory for you? I have people after me. And they have friends in the moral intern. Some are moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will. What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm <laughs> fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. There's a wince and pained little smile. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. What did you do to have these people after you? What happened here, the night he died? Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? All good. When was the window changed? Um, what did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Oranje. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. Oh. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. I mean, she does kind of look like a spy. Didn't think she was actually going to be one, though. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. Do you think they're going to... Do you think she's going to cooperate with that, Kim? I mean, I know we need it for records, but still. The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scott conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scott and their friends in the MI. <sighs> Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. It breathes out heavily. Wow. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airberg, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. Papalolo! I'm sure there are some people who have done much worse than that. Serves them right. When I am king, my savings bank will be the first against the wall. Uh, you're right. This is bad. You've destroyed the you just, you've destroyed what people have built. Uh, that's a lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. Yeah, that's a lot of shit you got yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting... She shakes her head at the thought. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. She concludes... What happened here, the night he died? We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. She points to the window. The silhouette of the bed is visible. Tell me what exactly what happened. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. Uh -huh. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. Okay, they were about to do it. No, no, they did it. 
She was, she, okay. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see. I could. A great pain moves through her, a dark and indefinite wave. She continues in spite of it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. Then what happened? You don't have to continue if you don't want to. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then run downstairs. There's a long pause. She just stands there, her arms at her sides. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. You're a cigarette, miss. I'm sorry this happened to you. Are you sure you're not making this up? At a motherfucker. Uh, just nod. We're going to need more details. Um, your cigarette, miss. Oh. She looks at it and quickly tosses the butt aside. Uh, sorry this happened to you. So am I. She immediately proceeds to light another one. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. <laughs> Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Uh, Titus said you look pretty high. Uh, Titus said you look pretty high. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Okay, she tilts her head. Good thinking. Clear your head. You should clear your head. Get into his mindset. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot, just a little. <sighs> he was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. Who's Ruby? They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. I see. I think Ruby's your partner. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. Huh? She says as if it's self-evident. I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like, things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Protecting her, too. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy Boy? He looks at you. Why not? Okay, let's go with that. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. But I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know. Take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower. To keep him upright. To mislead you. They were tampering with the body. Yeah. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. Oops what? About 20, yes. Ruby explained it would make the blood... You know what it does. She looks at the ground, then raises her light brown eyes to meet yours. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just 
looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on, his armor too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. He carried him out. I knew what they were going to do, make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. Yeah, okay. Checks out with Tommy. This Ruby, where is Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. She's probably across the channel or maybe one of these apartments up here. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. Yeah, we're gonna need it. When did it happen? Did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot. When it happened? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. Uh, did you kill Lely? Of course you didn't. Uh, could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette. So they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What <laughs> happened didn't have anything to do with me. But maybe it did. Either way, it's something to consider. It probably didn't. Either way, it's something to consider. We can't go after Loose Cap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. If there's one thing I know, it's that you'll get nothing from there. Mm. Uh, why did you call the cause if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth, idiot. She's nothing of the sort. So you would have us believe, but you're not. I don't think so. Why did you do it? But you're not. I'm not going to disagree with you. No, I... But you're not. You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off. And that little fucker threw stones at him. Yeah, Kuno. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Yeah. When was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. Okay, checks out. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom, inside. Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. Uh, I think we're done here for now. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... The lieutenant glances at you, then at the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or... Uh, in God's name, wake up. The love that did him in... What's this? I might as well give it a shot. But we are awake, sire. She has been forthcoming with sordid details women usually conceal. Most shocking details of the sexual kind. We are a bulwark, unbreached. If you have doubts, just give us one example of deceit. Just one, and we will gladly change our minds. Just a proposition. Could the lured explicitness conceal something less sensational but more illegal? I got nothing. Your right wise counsel is silly of me. It's silly of me to imply she lied. Gosh, she's so young, isn't she? 
She would look spectacular in a starring role. Be careful not to look too long into her soon-to-be-famous face, lest it make you look like an indecisive suitor. Need to talk about your room again. Yeah? Nothing. All right. Uh... She takes a long, pensive drag of her Astra Menthol. That was quite the drag. I don't think I have anything else, Kim. I don't know. Couple questions? Yes, miss. I hope you don't mind. All right. Coolly, gracefully, she pulled. Okay. I guess I'll go. Did you kill Lily? What? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? There's a silence. He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. All kinds of crazy things happen when drugs are involved. Sweet, sweet drugs. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun lying around. Close to her hand. A military weapon using jacketed ammunition. Downstairs people have this crazy idea that you killed him. Uh, if it's okay, it's okay if you did it in self-defense. Drugs were an integral part of your relationship. Maybe they contributed to its end. He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? Okay, I'd like to answer some more other questions, miss. Like what? She waits, her light brown eyes wandering over the floor, over your face. You know, I don't think I have anything there. She nods, silently. I'm, I don't want to push her on that. I really don't. Can we do anything about this one? The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's not. Okay, Kim. Uh, let's check the, the window. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. All right, visual calculus, don't fail me now. Golden light melts away into the blue glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon lit shapes, a man and a woman on the single bed. Wow. That is far. So there's three possible positions? You got that off the map? What position are they in? And why is there a face here? Is that who he will? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling. The woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th and a shot has just been fired. Okay, you can't really see anything, so that, that, that's okay. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Where does it come from? From the roof outside, location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole, shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. Inspect the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Have a look at point A, the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. Shouldn't there be a gun residue outside? So I'm what, 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? Shouldn't there be gun residue? There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. So much for that. 80% sure. 72%. With a weapon that fires jacketed ammunition. Likely a rifle. This is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. 
The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Could the shot have come from inside the room? A closer point. Are there any arguments against a prime? A prime the roof. Uh, could the shot have come from inside the room? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, mm. rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Are there any arguments against A prime? None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. True. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Extrapolate the radius to include all of Martinez. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. More precisely. B prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. True. Uh, let's look at the boardwalk. 700 meters away, the likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. How about Land's End? 1.2 kilometers away, the least likely of these positions. Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it. Possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. How about the, the island? One kilometer away. An unlikely point of origin. Beyond the docks somewhere. On an islet in islet. the Bay of Martinez, perhaps. There are islets there. Badly charted as they may be. Okay, well. The shot would have been a small miracle. 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue de Saint Gislain 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme and access to the islets is questionable. So you're saying it might have been from the balcony? Is that, that's a little close and they both would have been dead, right? Kim, do you think the shot could have been made from further than the roof in Marginese? From where, precisely? Let's say B Prime, the boardwalk and all the other options. I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? It's okay. It's much less than... It's okay. Much less than from the roof, but still. Uh, I'm just being thorough. Much less than from the roof, but still. Okay, well, we should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. A simple hypothesis can be wrong, but it's something to build on. All right then. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Uh, I would really like to talk to the Hardy Boys. Hold on, let's get there first. So I would really like to talk to the Hardy Boys to um, get a better idea on what's going on. Um, I don't know exactly what they have in store for us uh, after we got all the information that we that we just got. Um, but I'm gonna end here for today. We'll save that for next time. We also are in in time to talk to our apartment person. It is 2100 past 2100 even. So yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's review for you for now. Honestly, a whole lot of information regarding the circumstances of the the murder. Um at least we have a good direction on where to go from here. We have a few more questions for the Hardy Boys. We also could probably ask uh the 
the apartment guy to see if he saw anything on the roof uh, that would rule out the the roof theory and from there we just kind of have to wait for the bridge to come up right and that's not going to happen until tomorrow which is wednesday it's still tuesday so we got to get some sleep in and you know what i think i think we're we're getting along here uh quite nicely quite nicely so yeah look forward to that next time i hope you enjoyed that nuggets thank you for watching thank you for coming and have a nice rest of your day see you next time good night and goodbye